Hello. I've written the first paragraph of my new murder mystery novel. See what you think. Chapter one. As he peered out onto the rainy morning from his office at Chelmsford CID, DCI Barnford mulled over a particularly perplexing mystery. He knew for a fact that Mick Hannon had killed old Mr Crabtree on January 31st. Yet Mick Hannon had a cast iron alibi. 20 people placed him in the Three Badgers pub miles away in Basildon. How was this possible? Actually, Mick Hannon was one of a pair of identical twins and that's how he did it. But DCI Barnford didn't know that. I'm wondering if I should leave that reveal till nearer the end of the book. But what do you put in between? That's the difficulty, isn't it? Joining me this evening, on my right, James Barnard, who is a member of a critically acclaimed UK choir. Felicity Barnard, who is currently knitting a set of dinosaurs. And their captain, Andrew Lay, who's been to the opening of at least three Waitrose stores. United by a participation in choral music, they are the Antiphons. Andrew, I believe you were the best man when your teammates got married to each other. Apparently so. It's some time ago, to be honest. Uh, and how long have you been a quiz team? About two minutes ago. That's right. <laughs> oh, you we, just formed a quiz well, team? Well, no, we've been to quizzes in the past, but, uh, but not for the purposes of anything special like this. How long ago was the wedding? 2008. Well, it's impressive you're still in touch. <laughs> <laughs> I remember once my parents looking at a photograph of their best man in an old album and going, what was that guy's name? <laughs> I'm glad you're in a different place. <laughs> Good luck. You. you are playing on my left. Jez Sterling, who was the first ever tourist to travel the Silk Road after the breakup of the Soviet Union. Jane Kendrick, a retired biology teacher and member of the Anglo-Chilean Society. And their captain, John Clark, a retired accountant who's got the full set of pre-decimal halfpenny coins dating back to 1902. United by a relish for red wine, they are a drop of red. Now, John, your team is almost in the opposite position. You've been quizzing together online for a long time, but you met for the first time last night. That's right, yes. <laughs> Who of you was most disappointed, do you think? Yeah. Ooh, well, that's a good question. I don't think any of us were. I think, I think we all, all got on really well, touch wood. <laughs> How come you quiz together online? Are you a team or is it a league? We're all members of an online quiz group that Jay runs and Jess and I are also members of an online crossword group that he runs. Well, I hope that the chemistry works in the flesh as much as it does online. Good luck to you. You have won the toss and you'll be going first. Please choose an Egyptian hieroglyph. Eye of Horus, please. The Eye of Horus will be your first question. What is the connection between these apparently random clues? Here's the first. Silver and gold. Oh, yes, yes. Next. Yeah. Next. Oh, 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 It's not the basics, um, mm. but can those two maybe are the basics to the one below? So I, I do need an answer. Um, are they all heavy? Not it, I'm afraid. So there's a bonus chance for you, Antiphons, if we you don't. We think know. simply in these fields in brackets, they are referred to as metals. Exactly right. It's situations where you would use the word metal. So to a heraldist, argent and ore are the metals. What can you tell me about the second clue? Well, I know the term a metalled road, but I don't really know what that exactly means. But. Yeah, road metal, it's from the Latin metallum, a mine or a quarry. So civil engineers would say road metal, actually meaning this broken stone. Mm. To an astronomer, all the elements are metals, <laughs> apart from hydrogen <laughs> and helium. And that last one, we've said chemist, but that's sort of everybody, really. That's, that would be our definition of metals. So well done, you get the bonus point and your chance to choose a question. Uh, horn viper, please. OK, this is going to be the picture question. What do these pictures have in common? Here's the first. Yeah. Next, please. Yeah. Next, please. Smaller diamond. Can, can, learn. Small diamond. Next, please. 
Uh, we think they might be types of lettuce. They are lettuces. <laughs> what are we looking at? Uh, well, lamb's lettuce, little gem, took us a while to understand that one, an iceberg, and I'm not familiar with the can-can lettuce. Or the can-can lettuce. Be. Yes, I, my notes helpfully inform me, a green lettuce. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> So one of those. Do you think it's a lettuce that's been invented for the purpose for the of this programme? Yeah. It might be. Just with the, the question editors hope to see some girls dancing in that. Ooh, bloomers. But well done, they are types of lettuce. Drop of red, what would you like next? Uh, lion, please. Lion. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Next, please. Is something in the following? Oh, it's probably, it's probably going to be translations. Oh, yeah, translations. Oh, other, other places. Yeah. So Hong Kong is going to be fragrant. Yeah. Paul, that comes up. Uh, next, please. Thank you. So, uh, translation. Oh, yes, I know what it is here. We think these are English translations of cities in Brazil. Absolutely right. What do you think the fourth clue would have been? Um, mountain of January. Uh, River of January. River of January <laughs> is exactly that fourth clue. Well done. If you translate them into Portuguese, what cities do you get? Belo Horizonte. Mm -hmm. um, Sao Paulo. Uh, Sao Paulo, yes. Mm -hmm. Joyful. And the second one is Porto Alegre. Mm. Have you ever been to Brazil, Jane? No. Would you like to go? Not especially, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've been. Have you? Yeah, I went to the, the rainforest. I went hunting with the, um, with the Indians. You went hunting? Yeah. What did you catch? A crocodile. Are you joking? No, serious. You caught a crocodile? Well, we, well, I didn't catch it, but the people I was with caught it. We ate it. I, I need to know a lot more. <laughs> How did they catch the crocodile? Well, it's done at night time. We had uh, torches. Mm -hmm. And the torch is you shine the torch into the, in, into, into, the, into the banks and you're waiting to get the glows of the eyes. So we're in like a canoe. And then a guy had a, like, um, like a spear, a bit like a, a harpoon spear, so put it in. And d how was it cooked? Well, you just got up into, into fillets and then they barbecued it. <laughs> what an amazing story. I don't think it's the kind of thing I'd like to do on holiday. <laughs> it's an impressive anecdote. But you didn't damage the crocodile no, yourself? No, I, was, I was just there watching. It's their way of life. It's how they, they eat. Hmm. Well, I look forward to you topping that story <laughs> later in the evening. What would you like for your own question? Uh, two reads, please. Two reads. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Next, please. Next, please. String with a blob again. Um, it's the F1 safety thing. But, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's a light bulb moment. Next, please. Oh, the, the, the pendulum, hang. things pendulum. that hang, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it took us a while. Things that hang in some way. So the sort of Damocles obviously hanging above Damocles. Uh, I need light something bulbs. a bit more specific. Hang above people, or hang above or on a thread, or ab above above people. Above right. people's heads is the key thing. So a light bulb in a comic would appear over somebody's <clears throat> head. Plum bob, where do you see that over someone's head? Not sure. It's in the Sims video game. Ah. It uh, it, it hangs a sort of diamond shape above the head of a sim to show that sim is being controlled by the player. Halo, obviously above a saint's head, at the sort of Damocles, of course, in the old story. Well done. Drop of red, what will you have? Twisted flux, please. The twisted flux. What connects these clues? Here's the first. Next, please. Okay, so what are they named after? It's becoming what they're named after, isn't it? Next, please. We need the last one. Next, please. Oh, red eye. They're all called red eye. Maybe. All red eye. We think these are all called red eye. I'm afraid that is not the answer. So, Antiphons, you have the chance of a bonus point. Oh. I think they're just a, a colour eye. That's right. I'm afraid <laughs> you went a little bit too specific. What are the other clues? So we do have red eye for the overnight flight, mm -hmm. uh, pink eye, zoster. That, that's like sort of 
chicken pox is sort of virus, isn't it, or something uh, like actually, that? Actually, no. So, so conjunctivitis is pink eye. Yeah. That first clue, it's a bird. It's an Australian oh. bird known as the white Good. eye or silver eye. Oh, it's a black eye. A so periorbital hematoma is, is a black eye. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So a range of colours to the eye. So you get the bonus point antiphons and you get the last question of the round, the water question. Oh. Which, presumably, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's the music <laughs> question. If we hear your clues, what do they have in common? Here's the first. All night and day, we're fairing. Uh, night, night day, night day. Night day. Scottish. Scottish. Next, please. A bit of a punt, or should we go for next one? Next, please. Should we go for it? We'll go for a bit of a punt just basically on excerpt two and say fish. The answer is fish. Oh, Very well done. <laughs> what did we hear? That was the Trout Quintet by Schubert. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know what either of the other two. No, sorry. Uh, wow. Uh, well, the third one was Stingray, which was a, a oh, Jerry Anderson well, show. Ah. Yes, of course it was Stingray. The first one, a folk ballad, The Shoals of Herring. And uh, should we have a little blast of Clue 4 for everyone to enjoy? You denied them this. <laughs> All connected by Fish. Very well done. Lived up to your team name there. High scoring on the music question. And that means at the end of round one, Drop of red have two points. The antiphons have six. <laughs> Sequence is time now. The teams must tell me what comes forth in a series of clues. You'll be going first again. Drop of red, what would you like? Um, two reads, please. Two reads. You'll be seeing the first in a series. What would you expect to see in fourth place? Time starts now. Next, please. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's Generation Gamers. So, the, so what's the first one? What's his name? Larry Grayson. Larry Grayson was first. Larry Grayson was first. It was Larry Grayson. Bruce Forsyth was first. Bruce Forsyth, it was Larry Grayson. Next, please. It's Bruce Forsyth. Say it again. Bruce Forsyth. We think it's Bruce Forsyth again. It is Bruce Forsyth again, and why? Generation Game hosts. That's right, and we're going back in time towards the original. Which was the best host, do you think? Oh, definitely Brucey. Bruce Forsyth. Larry Grayson. I, obviously, Larry Grayson was the best. Oh, Did no. you see Mark Gatiss playing Larry Grayson in that show recently? Not. Yeah, he was brilliant. <laughs> he was brilliant, wasn't he? Was he was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. I like Larry Grayson. Jim Davidson, I would think you can safely say, nobody's favourite. <laughs> <laughs> what catchphrases do you remember from that show? <laughs> Good time, good time. Yes, good. <laughs> it's like Bruce is in the room. Cuddly <laughs> toy. Yes. What's on the board, Rosebury Ford? Oh, old school, very nice. <laughs> At the end of the one where he would say, you're, you're, a, you're a lovely audience, much better than last week. And, of course, that was an in-joke because they did two shows a day, so it was usually the same, same audience. I mean, our audience is always terrible. I mean, you never hear them laugh, do you? It was an absolute resounding silence <laughs> week after week. Generation Game hosts going back to Bruce Forsyth, who, of course, did it again later. Well done. Antiphons, what would you like? Eye of Horus, please. The Eye of Horus. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Uh, next, please. Um, what is it about? Wizard of Oz, what's she called? I don't know. Miss Dorothy Kent. Auntie, Auntie, oh, um, Auntie, oh, uh, why? Auntie M. Auntie yeah. M. So it's letters. K, L. Okay. Oh, Y, M, C, A, yes. Oh, so, what can we go for? First letter of the alphabet. Uh -huh. Yeah. Dodgy early buzz again, but uh, first letter of the alphabet, or something that indicates a. That would be an acceptable answer. Very good gambling. What's happening here? Why, for what reason? Mm -hmm. A question we're all asking. And uh, Dorothy's aunt, apparently. Auntie M. M. Of course, Auntie M, Auntie M. Body of salt water, C, a. so Y, M, C. I want something that stands for A. Very well done. OK, drop of red. The stakes are high. Well, I mean, they're not high. There's literally no prizes. <laughs> Nobody gets knocked out this evening. There are no stakes at all. But uh, there's a gap in points. Let's see if you're ready to gamble. What's your question? Twisted flux, please. The twisted flux. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next, please. Next, please. Be 
G. Music is not okay. G equals one and two. And why would that be? I think it's music. I see. Not the answer, I'm afraid. Antiphons, do you know? I'm struggling with this one as well. So we'll say, um, what can we finish after C, B, A? Z equals nine and ten. And why is that? Because I just made it up. I see. <laughs> I'm going to work out who is the youngest person here. It's probably you, Felicity. Mm. Do you mind my asking what you got in your GCSEs? Oh, oh. Eight A stars and two A's. I mean, <laughs> what went wrong in those two? Well, yes. <laughs> but did you get that, or did you get eights and nines and sevens and eights? I'm not that young. Because the GCSE <laughs> grades have been changed to numbers. In England, not in Wales, of course, they've kept the letters here, very wise. But now, if you get a C, it's a four or a five, depending on if it's a high C or a low C. So these are equivalent GCSE grades. Antiphons, what would you like next? Water, please. Water. What would come forth in this <clears throat> picture sequence? Here's the first. Just twins? I don't know. I don't, I, I don't recognise I don't know. It might be. Next, please. It's a crab. Oh, oh are they just the jet signs of yeah. Zodiac? Yeah. I don't know my order. I don't know my order. Oh, it's in order. Um, oh, um, Cancer, so Leo, Leo, Libra. Uh, what's after Leo? Le Libra. Are you Libra? Yeah. Oh, I'm Leo. We'll go next, please. Let's do a little bit of something. Yeah, right. Leo. Yeah. Scales. Scales. Yeah. 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 Some scales. Not the answer, I'm afraid. Drop of red. We've got to go for a bonus. A picture of the snooker player John Virgo. I mean, we went for Mary the Virgin, but <laughs> I will accept uh, the beautiful face of John Virgo as a possible answer. And the sequence is, of course... Side of the Zodiac. Yeah. Side of the Zodiac. So we're looking at which signs? Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo. Exactly so. Signs of the Zodiac going forward through the year, and we wanted Virgo. So you get the bonus, and what would you like for your own question? Lion, please. Lion. What is the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next, please. Okay. Uh, next, please. Nine Dawson. Ah, oh, okay. Nine Dawson. Is the right answer? Who's the rugby union fan? I am. <laughs> ah. What positions do these people play in? I don't know the names of the positions, but this was the um, England winning team, I think. Exactly so. The 2003 Rugby World yeah. Cup, this was the winning team. And at position number six, Richard Hill, then Neil back, Lawrence Delalio at eight. And in position nine, Matt Dawson, a scrum half. Well done. One question remains. Antiphons, it's the Horned Viper. You'll be getting that. What comes forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Beanie. It's after me. Next, please. Could be a wordy sort of one, maybe. Next, please. Uh, right, so this... Are they the, the holy cities? So is it Jerusalem? In terms of, um, like, numbers of followers, most holy city, for different numbers of followers. Do you think? I don't yeah. know. Like, I haven't got anything else. I don't know the first two. So it would be... Very nice, it could well be in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Yeah, Jerusalem. Yeah. Jerusalem. Yeah. Jerusalem. Yeah. Jerusalem. And why? We think it might be something to do with holy cities possibly ranked by followers of those of, of religions. Uh, so what religion are you thinking of? A Christian holy site. I will accept that answer. What I would have loved to hear is that it's uh, destinations so for pilgrimages. Oh, Sorry, yes. But mm. I think Jerusalem would be that for a Christian, so I will accept it. What can you tell me about the earlier clues? Uh, Honestly, not sure. Is that in Hinduism? Is that Hindu yeah. Lumbini is the birthplace of Buddha. Ah. Right. So that would be a Buddhist pilgrimage destination. Varanasi for Hindus, Mecca, of That's course, right, yeah. the Islamic pilgrimage destination. So somewhere that a Christian might make a pilgrimage to, Lourdes would be a famous one, but Jerusalem, I think I will accept. Very good. That means at the end of round two, a drop of red have caught up to seven points. The antiphons have 11. <laughs> Time now for the fearsome connecting wall and antiphons. You'll be going first this time. So please choose lion or water. Lion, please, which way? OK, you have two and a half minutes to solve the lion wall, starting now. 
wart, pimple, freckle. Yep. Simba and Mowgli. We've got sort of uh, people from the Jungle Book type of uh, um, Disney animal things. Oh, or can't or animated films. We've got Pongo as well. From Pongo's so. a dog. That. Oh, is it? Sorry, okay. Uh, oh, I think. Uh, and Simba, but they. Mm. What talk? A wart from. Um, uh, Yes. Yeah. Right, we've got <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, we've maybe done that like, stage two too fast, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. Um dimple chip. Simple. 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 Smart. smart key. Key. Skeleton key, Alan Key. Yep. Base. Smart oh. key. Base key. Uh, uh, base key. Don't know. Let's do those. Remember the line. Well, what's chip key button, Day well, what is that? Days. I don't recognise that at all. We've got right? Alfie Bow. Yeah. But a dimple chip. Could be a smart key, couldn't it? Yeah. Um, um, dimple, pimple, so uh, change the left last name, chip. Row. Um, Day, days, like, uh, there were another first letter. Um, is there any, are there any red herrings from the other groups that give you clues? Oh, yeah. Uh, um, dimple is the thing. Yeah, but. Um, Do we need to start? Yes. Which one of these two? No. Go on. So, uh, chip key, base key, dimple base. key, bow key. Um, oh dear. Base um, bass. Base bass. Yeah, fish, no, there's only one. Um, chip. Computer chip, something of those. Um, You've got Let's 30 go. seconds. Please, please, please. So pick another. Chip. Um, if you do, so what have we tried so far? I think smarts might be like a name. Oh, possibly. really? Well, I don't, um, we tried that. Um, no, I don't think. Base. 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 Oh, dear, it's not a good one, is it? <laughs> I'm afraid no. that's your third life and the wall has frozen. But you found two groups. Can you tell me what connects the first blue group, pimple, mole, freckle and spot? So, facial features. They are marks or features of a face. Or another part of the body, I suppose. And the next group, Simba, Mowgli and so on. Are there characters from Disney films, lead? Character. Exactly they're, so. They're, 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 they're named... young male yes, Disney yes. protagonists who don't share their name with the title. And you can get points for the connections in the groups you didn't find. So let's resolve the wall. There we are. Alan, Bo, Bass, and so on. Alfie's. Should we just go with that? Alfie Allen? Yes, Alfie's. All Alfie's. Alfie Days is a, a, a YouTube star. <laughs> Alfie Bo, of course, the singer. Alfie Allen and Alfie Bass, actors. And the last group, Skeleton, Smart, Dimple, Chip. Those, Those are the keys. Yeah. 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 They are keys. Yes, I didn't know the <laughs> dimple key or the chip key either, but I think any burglars watching will be very familiar. <laughs> So you found two groups, you gave you all the connections. That is a total of six points. Let's bring in their opponents now, give them the other wall and see how they get on. Drop of red, it'll be a drop of water for you. Two and a half minutes to solve it, starting now. OK, so we've got the two. Any ideas? We've got some boots. We've got some, we've got some uh, comment. Dandy, 2018, Victor and Topper. There's another one. There's another move. Got it's got e eagle. Eagle could be a bird or a koi. You've got Dundee, so, Pepper and Jay, Bow. Eagle, Topper. And Peacock. Victor. So we've definitely got some birds. Mm. Mm. Just do Dundee, Peacock, Pepper and Jay and Bow. OK, then hurry up. Was it Dundee? Dundee. Dundee. Pepper, Peacock, Pepper and Jay and Bow. OK, brilliant. Yeah. So it's still, still the comics. So we've got that, that one, that one, that one, and Topper. Commander. Oh, that's not... OK, Whitmore. Oh, it's Laura Whitmore. OK, it's La Laura Davies. Yeah. Uh, Laura, Minnie, yeah. maybe? Yeah, yeah. Minnie, yeah. Or Topper. Oh, yeah. Well, well done. Right, so we've still got the, still got the, um, still got the comics. Yeah. Three lives we've now. Got, we've, got, we've got birds. But, so Hobby's a bird, an oh, uh, right, eagle, and a kite, an owl. Yes, it's and a kite, right. eagle, hobby, and an owl. And so the ones are those are the comics. comics. Yeah. You've solved the wall. Very well done. What about the connections? Please tell me what connects the first group, Dandy, Bo, and so on. They're like um, names for men who are very dressy and not in the, like the 
um, like Beau Brummel and people like that. Exactly so. And don't worry, Jane, I noticed how often you had to ask your male teammates <laughs> to press that before they finally listened to you and got the group. Yes. Well done, Fops and Poppin' Jays. And the next group, Davis, Whitmore and so on. These are famous Lauras. Exactly so. Can you tell me who those Lauras are? Laura Whitmore presents Love Island, does she? Mm -hmm. Laura Davis, Davis is a golfer. golfer. Yes. And the other two are American actresses. Of course. And the next group, Hobby Kite, Owl Eagle. Birds. Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey. And the last group, 2000 AD and so on. Comics. They are the British comics. Very well done. So that is all the connections as well. And the bonus, it's a maximum of 10 points. Let's have a look at the scores going into the final round. The Antiphons have 17 points. Drop of Red have 17 points. So it's a bit of a close one going into the missing vowels round. Fingers on positive teams. I can tell you that the first group of disguised clues are all tennis code violations. Antiphons. Leaving the court. Correct. Antiphons. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Quite right. Antiphons. Double obscenity. I don't think that's an official violation, I'm afraid, so I must take a point away. Drop of red, do you know? Audible obscenity. That is the problem. Next clue. Drop of red. Coaching. Coaching. Correct. Next group, captains played by Tom Hanks and the films in which he played them. Drop of red. Oh, good. No, that's too long, I'm afraid. I must take a point away. Antiphons, do you know? Captain Miller and Saving Private Ryan. Correct. Next clue. Antiphons. Captain Lovell and Apollo 13. Yes, it is. Drop of red. Captain Phillips and Captain Phillips. Indeed. Antiphons. Captain Sullenberger and Sully. Yes, it is. Next category, landmarks named after presidents. Drop of red. Pompidou Centre. Correct. That's it. It's the end of the quiz. And what an exciting final round. Points flying about like a Quidditch match. Looking at the final scores, I can tell you there is one point in it. The winners with 21 points and through to the next round are the Antiphons. Drop of red, you finish on 20, just one point behind. Unlucky, but of course you're not out. You will get another chance to win through to the next round later in the series. So we will all be back here again right. in this studio another time to do much the same thing. As Karl Marx said, history repeats itself first as tragedy, second as farce. He gave quite a team talk, that Marx. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>